The pickup artist community grew immensely because of YouTube. What were once hidden forums only found by men desperate enough to go searching for them, the community became known after the book The Game was released in September 2005. But it wasn't until YouTube started becoming a part of everyone's daily lives that the community was fully in the mainstream. The pickup artist community was an enigma as it served as a beacon of hope for many young men struggling with dating women, but was also seen as a cringy attempt at improving one's dating life for older men who could see through all of the gimmicks. What started as a bag of tricks and pickup lines turned into a full self-development clinic and becoming your best self. The community grew as quickly and at the same pace as those teaching it. During the early stages of the community, Mystery, who is essentially the godfather of pickup, was teaching a straight line system for men getting laid. He basically turned women into objects and provided a roadmap for spiking her emotions, giving her reasons to be attracted to you, and then guiding her to the bedroom so that you could finally score. One of Mystery's mentees, Owen Cook, decided that he wanted to attract women using a different system, a system that relied more on personality, wit, humor, and just being yourself. Nearly 20 years later, Owen Cook has been running the largest dating company in the world for a decade and has shown no signs of slowing down. The game's brightest star has been confronted with one of the biggest challenges his company has had to face in its lifetime. His entire collection of videos relating to the art of attracting women have been removed from YouTube out of self-preservation. I can't explain how important these videos were to my life and hundreds of thousands of men all across the globe. Many people who've come throughout, throughout time, uh, starting in the 80s, more so in the 90s and the 2000s, they were teaching uh, pickup techniques. So what to say, what psychology to use, um, what stories to tell that would impress the girl. Some guys would do magic. Some guys would do uh, other. I mean, God, there's all kinds of things out there to try and uh, convince or manipulate or impress women uh, to sleep with you. Right. That, that, that's basically what it comes down to. All of that stuff felt really, really fake to me. And I've tried it all. I started getting into this stuff in the late 90s. So I was there kind of in the beginning of, of, of one of the big, big waves of uh, pickup and seduction. And it all just felt really fake and phony. I really started getting into this stuff and I decided to do something a little bit different. I wanted to meet and connect with women, but I didn't want to lie, cheat, manipulate, bribe them or get them drunk or go to clubs. All of that stuff just felt wrong. So I did something a little bit different. I decided I was just going to go out there, walk around the streets and like go into coffee shops, um, normal shops, malls, subways, whatever. And when I would see a woman I was really genuinely attracted to, I would just go talk to her. That's it. I'd start a conversation. I might say, hey, great walk, great shoes. Hey, you got a beautiful smile. I really like you. Hey, do you have a boyfriend? I mean, whatever. I tried all kinds of different things, but fundamentally... I was, I was not lying about my intention, to intentions or pretending that I didn't like them and, and acting like, you know, like I'm not really interested. No, no. I would walk up to them and I'd give them a direct compliment. I'd tell them they were attractive and, uh, and I would, uh, and with the intention of getting them on a date with me. That was, that was clear. That's, that was my thing. Okay. So the whole thing was called direct day game. Uh, when I started, people told me like, don't do it. No, you can't really do that. It's not going to work. You got to go to clubs, all this kind of stuff. And everyone thought it was crazy. I started doing it. I started coaching other guys, making videos, talking about it, blah, blah, blah. One thing led to another. There's guys doing day game all over the place, not just in London where I was at, all over the world. Like I would go to other cities and people would be running around talking to girls and I'd be like, okay. I am a long time, 10 year support, basically 10 year supporter of the pickup artist community, if you want to call it that. You know, I tend to not want to call it that because of the stigma associated with this term pickup artistry. But as a long time fan, I'm still someone who always approached it with a very balanced point of view. I always gravitated towards these other coaches, life coaches, self-help coaches, dating coaches, who had a more nuanced way of like empowering us, the students, to understand no means no, yes means yes. And frankly, why would you ever want to hook up with someone? You know, if your interest in this stuff is to hook up with people, which many people it is. Why would you ever want to hook up with someone who's not completely batshit so excited to hook up with you? We could actually just build ourselves as people, people who are so awesome, desirable, and just people who other like women, friends, whoever want to spend time with. Back in the day, you had books such as The Game and like books such as, uh, you know, like different little funny little, like, little books. Uh, what else were you going to do, right? At least that was eight, that got guys out of the house and it, it got them approaching and it got them trying to make something of, of their daily life rather than just kind of give up and kind of just be frustrated, right? So at least there's a light shining there, right? Where there's possibility for improvement, right? So that, that's, that's, that's a good thing, right? Even though, you know, the tactics were silly and, you know, it's no big deal. No harm, no harm is really done when a guy comes up and just recites a line. Let's say girls can see through that anyway. So that didn't last long. 
so from there came this whole wave of this company that just uh finished up right now it's called real social dynamics and th th this company um you know it's it kind of sparked and it, it kind of started you know teaching guys the ropes of how to how to go about approaching girls and how to you know go through it and you guys you got the ceo um tyler um you know he, he goes by the name of tyler um and he uh you know he he was putting in the work with his with his with his group and you know bringing forth to the table you know different type of things guys guys could try to improve their dating life and they were exploring that themselves in that area and they actually became a very pr uh, prominent company a very big company right um and they started getting a lot of business and you know with all that business it attracts negativity of course and it was a drama with this um the julian guy and of course you know he learned his lesson from that but regardless of all that deep inside they seem like good people right so you know it's kind of sad to see this ship uh sail around about 2005 in london there was a guy called yad so yad was a day gamer on the streets of london and he went out and he spoke to approached women during the daytime um and then about i think it was 2009 daygame.com uh, was formed so daygame.com was for me was the foundation was what I learned from uh, about 2009 or so I discovered daygame.com and that consisted of Yad, Andy Yosha, Tom Torero, John Matrix uh, and I think there were a few others um, but what they what they taught was was really quite pure and it was the ability to meet and approach women during the daytime without the presence of alcohol in a social situation approaching people and being able to hold a conversation and that's kind of what it was for me Glasgow MSP Bob Doris condemned the films Mary Helen Springburn MSP Mr Doris said the videos were an unsavoury reminder of some views that are still held within society I know some views that that some men are attracted to women is fucking horrible isn't it don't worry we'll all be gay soon enough then you'll be happy Mr Doris I felt unusually sheepish about about speaking and a bit unsure given that advances in female equality and empowerment are not well served usually by middle-aged white men bumping their gums. In fact, I don't think it's ever well served. Well, that's Bob Doris, SMP, MSP. Sadly, he didn't heed his own advice and he's been at it again. Bob Doris to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Bob Doris. First Minister, uh, BBC Social highlighted the practice of gaming by a so-called male pickup act artist in Glasgow, including footage on Mary Hill Road. Whilst I would make no further comment of that specific matter, given it's now subject to a police investigation, does the First Minister agree with me that this would be a timely opportunity to encourage the public to participate in the Scottish Government's hate crime consultation, eh, which is currently seeking, amongst other things, the public's views on recommendations around potential changes to the law on gender hostility and the stirring up of hatred? First Miss. Well, can I thank Bob Doris for raising this issue? I'm sure everybody in the chamber uh, would, like me, have been shocked uh, and appalled by the BBC's investigation into so-called gaming. I uh, watched the BBC social film and can say I was uh, utterly sickened uh, by what I saw. It did indeed, though, as Bob Doris uh, says, highlight why there is such a clear need for action to be taken to tackle gender-based prejudice and indeed gender-based violence. Lord Brackadale's view in his report on hate crime was that there are patterns of offending which relate particularly to hatred based on prejudice towards the victim's gender and which should be addressed through reformed hate crime legislation. Uh, the current consultation seeks views on how best to tackle misogyny and gender-based prejudice in Scotland and I would certainly encourage everyone who has an interest in this area, uh, which should be all of us, uh, to make their views known through the consultation process which runs until the 24th of February. Nicola Sturgeon and Bob Doris's take on this issue. It's all about hate crime, gender hostility, stirring up hatred, prejudice, gender-based violence, misogyny. Well, let's just look at some of those things. Gender-based violence, well, we can dismiss that one straight away because there's no violence involved here. Right, misogyny. Does this bloke hate women? I think he worships women, but he just sees them as sexual objects, though. But I don't think he hates them. He just selfishly uses them. And it's not because he's got something against women, it's because some women can supply what he wants. A woman that he f finds unattractive, he wouldn't have that attitude towards them. Stirring up hatred and hostility. 
Now, what he's basically doing is inciting men to be selfish in seeking to use women for sex, consensual sex, I have to add. Does that amount to hatred? I'm not sure it does. Does that amount to hostility? I don't think so. Maybe he's urging men to treat women with contempt, with disregard, but it's not all women. And he's not aiming to make people anti-women. He's aiming to make people pro themselves. He's promoting selfishness, not misogyny. Selfishness, where does that come in the politically correct dictionary? It's not there. So the MSPs don't see that so easily. They just reach for the tools to hand, which is it's hate speech. It's a hate crime. It's misogyny. All the familiar terms. A big problem with this is that in the Scottish Parliament, there are lots of valid opinions that are never articulated by MSPs, partly because hardly any of them believe them and partly because the ones who do don't say. They keep their heads down and they're more interested in their career and avoiding controversy than actually speaking the truth. People, they're a little bit blind and I think that's why they kind of hate game because it makes your defects glaringly obvious. It's like, um, this is what you need to deal with in order to advance and people do not like to admit they're wrong and they do not like to have their defects pointed out. They would rather stay asleep and just move on as sheep. It's a real uh, mirror to who you are and it, it makes you grow or it makes you just regress yes absolutely um like um it, it's good to like have a strong conviction uh, but um i um, i still you know try to temper that out uh, one of my favorite quotes one quote that i try and live by actually is a bertrand russell quote which is i would never die for my beliefs because i might be wrong right so uh it's good to have conviction but you know, it's important not to get too arrogant, you know, and always be kind of like trying to see things from a different angle. And you got to be open to, to the fact that maybe you're wrong, you know. And uh, um, I, I love pickup because it's forced me to really kind of uh, self-analyze a lot more had I not started on this path. So, so you know, I think for me has, you know, really like uh, helped me. Um, to be happier and to um, yeah, to, just to be uh, a better person all round, I reckon. Because it forces that introspection. This shit has been going on since Casanova and before. Seduction has been around for ages. If you look at the real red pill teachings, that is old time seduction. If you look at MGTOW's message, it is being a high value male with high sexual market value, SMV. It's a good fucking message. I love the message from Rolo to Massey. There's guys like 21 Studios that put on a lot of red pill dudes. It's not like you can't learn from facts. If there's any bullshit, cut that out and don't watch it. But it's easy to learn once you have field experience and you're like, yeah, that works and that doesn't work. I love the stuff in the black manosphere. That's a whole new level. It's not pickup community, but it's like the balance between pickup community and MGTOW. The way I see coaching is, look, guys just want to learn to be naturally better with women. That's it. They just want to learn to have better conversations. They want to be more confident. They want to have less social anxiety. I think anywhere else in life, when we have something we want to get better at, we get coaching, right? It's, it's pretty simple. If you want to learn to play guitar, you get coaching. If you want to be a better public speaker, you might take, uh, you might take coaching on that. If you want to learn to have better social interactions with women, you can get coaching on that too. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad about that. And the, the first rule um, to exemplify this is the idea and concept around always leaving the girl better than you found her. The mindset is always you're trying to bring value to the people around you and you're trying to create a positive, positive experience no matter what. There's an idea that seduction essentially provides a blueprint that men can follow as a way of interacting with women. So you'll be given a more or less scripted set of lines, routines that you can, you can follow. Most training camps now will spend the majority of their time out on the streets, in bars, cafes, museums, any public space actually practicing these techniques, putting them into action. And that means often unwillingly drawing women into these interactions. The whole point of everything I was teaching was that so that when you saw a woman and you felt that moment in your chest of like, oh my God, she's so beautiful, that, no, that deep inner knowing of like, you wanna go meet and connect with somebody, 
that's real. That's authentic. I, I think that's us on a soul level wanting to connect with another soul. Sure, there's an a physical attraction there, but it goes deeper than that. And how many times in my life I've felt that genuine connection where I just wanted to meet someone and, and see what would happen. And, and I didn't do it because I didn't feel worthy or I was afraid of rejection and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. The amount of times I felt horrible just wondering what would have happened if I, if I said hi to that woman. Maybe she would have liked me. Maybe we would have become friends. Maybe she would have been my girlfriend. You know, maybe, we, maybe that was the, the mother of my future children. I'll never know because I never said hi. That's a crappy feeling. And that's the reason I started doing day game. And that's why I was teaching it for years. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it changed the lives of thousands of people. People email me still to this day. People recognize me on the screen. Say, hey, Sasha, you know, blah, blah, blah. I got a girlfriend because I saw your videos all the time. And that's good. It's a really, really good thing for you to be empowered to take that part of your life into your own hands and not live like a freaking coward. You know what it was like when, when, before I got into this stuff? In my teens and my early 20s, I was absolutely a coward. It, it felt horrible not having the courage to express myself on such a basic level of just coming over and saying hi to somebody. It's terrible. And it's no way to live. Really. And it's getting worse with the tender culture and all this online dating stuff. It's getting worse and worse and worse. People have less social skills now than 20 years ago. Men gather and they learn directly from these dating coaches. And I went and I paid and it wasn't an investigative journalism at all. <laughs> No, what it was, was uh, I found myself at some point prior to that event that I attended, I was 21 years old, falling in a slump of depression, losing myself, finding myself being emotionally abusive to my girlfriend, to myself, it just truly the container of Spencer O'Gallagher became this toxic, disgusting, confusing mess of identity and conflict. And there I was at 21 years old, tuning into myself and maybe what I need. And I knew for years, my medicine, my life coaches, the people who inspired me to find myself, to find my purpose in this world, happened to be these really weird fringe coaches from the, what was once like a proper dating company, Real Social Dynamics. These men on YouTube, it's so strange, but it just so happened that these men on YouTube were the men who were able to speak the words that helped empower me with the tools of confidence to then go out in the world and accomplish the goals I need to accomplish. Those guys who go to dating coaches and dating companies to learn the skill, and keep in mind that I'm a dating coach and I'm speaking from experience here, but most guys who come to me are normal guys. Right? They're normal guys with good intentions. They've done what society told them to. They went out there, they got a job, they go to the gym, uh, or they go to university. And wh whatever kind of guy it is, these are just your normal, regular guys. So maybe they grew up with a lot of social anxiety, uh, which led them to have an inability to talk to girls. Or, or maybe they grew up in an extremely strict and conservative religious family household where they were naturally raised with a lot of sexual shame. Well, whatever the situation is, most of these guys who come on program to learn from dating coaches, they're just your normal everyday guys. A lot of my clients and I believe the clients of the company Street Attraction as well, a lot of them, they get into this, they come on program, they pay so much money to invest in themselves just so they can find a girlfriend just so they're gonna have someone in their life to enjoy life with. I know so many companies, I know for a fact that this industry not only changed my life, okay, this community changed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of my students' lives for the better, okay? More confidence, happier, okay? More success with women, okay? Some of them have met, met the love of their life. Some of them just have the confidence now to meet and date women okay whatever it is i know for a fact i've seen the other side of the coin and that side of the coin is what i focus on because i understand in my head that what i am offering is a good product is a good um i'm helping people to become better versions of themselves through getting this part of their life handled dating okay mastery or success with women it's very blurry territory, isn't it, in these this day and age? But I think the key is, if you see an attractive girl in an environment, in a daytime scenario, like a coffee shop or on the street, 
There is nothing wrong if you genuinely like the look of her, going up to her and saying to her in a calibrated manner, hey, I just wanted to say hello, I thought you, I thought you looked nice. And I, I don't see the issue with that. No. It's not about labelling yourself and separating yourself and putting yourself in a box and flying the flag for that cause. It's about actually making good lifestyle choices and becoming a high value meal. Like I said, this shit has been around from the beginning of time. It's just dating. It's the most natural thing in the world, a man meeting a woman, a man talking to a woman. It's how we have all come to be in existence. It's not about trying to get something for people. It's about everyone lifting up as a society. And so I think what coaching actually does is it makes us all better as people. Now, it's not just about women. Like I have guys that lead this program. Uh, for example, like the, the last one we ran, we had a guy, incredibly successful businessman. He, he literally sold his company to Yahoo. And he left that bootcamp saying that I will be a better boss and leader from the social skills I've learned on this program. And not only that, but the students leave having better interactions with their family, their friends, and of course women, right? A lot of these guys now have very fulfilling relationships. And I don't know how you can look at that in a negative light. I don't know why there's still people out there that are trying to take that away. I mean, how do we want our society to look and feel? You know, do we want men to be able to feel like men go up and approach women, have amazing interactions? Do we want women to feel empowered? Do we want women to be able to enjoy sex and pleasure and be with the men they want to be with? Or do we just want to separate men and women from society and not let that happen at all? And so we need to be very careful about the way we represent this narrative. Men and women gathered on Buchanan Street to protest Glasgow pickup artist Addy Agame. Videos have surfaced showing the man approaching young women and using a series of lines and tactics, he tries to persuade them to go home with him. This display of solidarity has been organised by the Empowered Women's Project and is hoped to show the people of Glasgow that this behaviour is not acceptable. A crying, emasculated man. This is what feminists like. I thought this is what they find attractive. We as men, we are constantly being told that we need to reconnect more with our emotions. So I would have thought a guy like this would be a feminist's wet dream. I'm so fucking, I'm fed up and I'm sad about it. I'm sad. I'm sad that, I'm sad that the, these hit pieces are coming out. I'm sad. What motivated me to want to make my video, Feminist Real Shock and Truth About Pick Party Seminar, is because I'm sad. I'm sad for these young men who don't have proper guidance, don't have proper communities, don't have a healthy male space, a healthy male container to meet with other men, to discuss their trials and tribulations with other men, to learn from experienced men. And I'm not, this is the thing, I'm not just talking pickup. The beauty that got me sucked into these YouTubers, in my case, it's real social dynamics. The beauty that got me sucked into their YouTube channels 10 years ago just about is that the the pickup advice the dating advice which also by the way is usually some pretty damn good advice and i'm really happily dating my hot girlfriend for five years now and having an amazing relationship thanks to these people otherwise i would have never accomplished that but it's not just about that dating advice it's not at all well, as the founder of the Empowered Women Project, women's rights are hugely important to me. As a woman, like, it's easy for me to get pissed off when people say, oh, we're doing this in the name of women, and then guess what? It's a video all about you. But, oh well. This video surfaced um, last week about this guy who's a so-called pickup artist called Abby Agin. And what he does is teaches other men how to approach women in the street and basically harass them until you get their number and take them home. It's coercive behaviour um, and it's, it's deeply disturbing. Um, off the back of that, I decided to arrange a bit of a rally to say this is not okay, we won't feel unsafe on the streets, um, and that's how today came about. The Empowered Women Project was launched after my mental health swiftly deteriorated. This person you see here today, she creates content for the BBC. I felt frantic. I was sat on the bridge ready to take my own life. The next thing I remember is being in the back of a police car being escorted somewhere, and they took me to a hospital where I was sectioned under the Mental Health Act. You want to seem superior by highlighting other people's faults and insecurities in order to hide your own. They have no personality. They don't have much to offer apart from some 
low level wit and sarcasm and they have minimal talent so they rely on putting people down it's see through it's shallow it's hollow where are you going to go with that negative shit in the long run this is an example of how not to be don't be that creepy fucker trying to get people on side it's very manipulative it's human beings girls are human beings don't try and fucking manipulate them with your fucking comedy shit try and put fucking pickup artists down fuck pickup artists you don't give a fuck about pickup artists it just shows they have very low self-esteem seeing the youtube channel that this guy set up i felt like some of the vulnerable girls in the videos could have been me at some point I, i'm quite lucky that i wasn't sort of 17 18 19 when social media was around however i just feel for these vulnerable girls who clearly haven't consented to being filmed and didn't know that they were the subject of some sort of game and um, i just think it's just great i don't know who this protest chick is she sounds like some sad loser with nothing going on in her life. She's probably lonely bored in a feminist head case. From what I've been told, she's quite unattractive. I would never approach her. She sounds like she's obsessed with me. There's still no sign of my husband because he hadn't been where he said he'd been. He'd been with the woman who he left me for later that day. I lost everything overnight. The divorce came through. He gave up on me just like everyone else had done. I was moved into temporary homeless accommodation. I started making poor decisions. <laughs> okay, so none of that panned out. You can't cook, you live on ice cream, checking your bank balance terrifies you, and you're single, but you're happy. And that's the main thing. Doing good onto others, of doing good for yourself, of doing the most with your life, of feeling alive, feeling present, feeling engaged, which once you can hone into that reality, a consequence could be that you attract people who want to spend time with you, romantic, friendships, whatever. Great. It's a win-win-win because then we've just created these amazing individuals learning this content who then get to be amazing people who are a light in the lives of other people. This is the good. So the reason why I encourage, like, point our fingers at ourselves. I'm so fed up. I'm so fed up because I only got closer to these communities after making Feminist Reveal Shocking Truth about Pickup Artist Seminar. We need to not only call it out, but we need to make sure that if we see this behaviour as citizens, that we, we feel that we can approach and help people. What's this woman talking about? It seems like we're living in a different universe altogether. Take the skills that they gave me, the marketing skills, all these beautiful things that they helped nurture in me, and at a certain point, it's like, I love you guys so much, but you know, I'm still young and dumb and I want to go do my own thing. So this is a long and deep relationship in my life is this community, this dating advice community, because not only did it empower me with happiness, confidence, communication skills at a young age, it, it also always realigned me back on my path, my purpose in my life. You know, it would always like, it would always fix me. I'd always found that it could fix me when I was falling into slumps of depression and toxic behavior. And at some point I even got to work with them. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful because in doing that, I only got to meet more students, more men, closer behind the scenes. There I was, a woman invading the male space. Yes, okay, maybe. Sorry. 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 It's also kind of my space too. It really helped me. There I was, this woman, and I got to witness what these men are in these communities who are paying to attend these events these dating events i got to meet hundreds of them you know what i found they're just guys they're just beautiful amazing men who have experiences of a lot of pain they don't feel aligned to their identity the world they grew up in the society they grew up in doesn't give men a clear path in how to embody themselves as men you know and to me the world that we are in and this is why as like feminist as pickup artists no the men don't want me and the women don't want me because i'm trying to speak and bind these worlds together i'm creating a bridge because what i see is like if we want to talk about patriarchy and if we want to talk about toxic masculinity i think society as i see it breeds those behaviors and i think these other coaches are trying their best to create an alignment within young men so that they could knock toxic masculinity out of the way and create these balanced men going about the world 
living their best lives and also nurturing amazing and fulfilling relationships with women. It's hugely important that women come along and men today to show that we won't stand for this behaviour on our streets. Um, day and night we want people to feel safe enough to go around about their day without worrying about being harassed and bombarded by some guy who's just, you know, preying on vulnerable people. That sounds quite sexist to me. She's already belittling him. It's almost like she's not sure of what she's saying, like it's a question. She's saying it almost as if like, uh, is this what you want me to say? Is this what you want to hear? It's not sexism. To confuse the two is dishonest. You would have thought that the program makers would have checked what sexism was before they started a witch hunt on those that supposedly practice it. Anyway, let's look at the dictionary definition of what sexism is. So this is the Collins uh, dictionary definition. Sexism is the discrimination on the basis of sex especially the oppression of women by men. Even the modern dictionary definition of sexism is sexist. <laughs> He's not being sexist, at least not by the Collins dictionary definition. I felt like a coward in a hospital ward, pacing the corridors, wondering why I couldn't even manage to end it all. I'd even failed at that. I was thinking recently about just how much porn I consume. These girls have a brain as well. As a matter of fact, women are a lot better at detecting bullshit than guys. There, there is an evolutionary explanation for this, but basically, ever since back in caveman days, women have always needed to be better at detecting bullshit. Because back in the day, their life depended on them being able to choose the right guy and the right people to follow, and therefore they needed to be better at reading people. So these girls, if they decide to go on a date with the guy who was on a seduction program, who approached her in broad daylight on the street, then it's because she genuinely is interested in that guy and that she chose him. The end result of all of this is going to be guys who are going to have healthy dating lives, who are perhaps going to have girlfriends, wives, and build really meaningful relationships. Because at the end of the day, I do feel that if you meet somebody, you know, and this is just my personal opinion. A lot of the best, uh, even sex itself, comes from a, a nice connection you build with somebody. It just isn't all about the sex, right? And one may think, oh, yeah, they're just, I mean, there are people out there who just out for that. But the truth is that's sad, right? Um, and I don't want to be judgmental either, right? Because you might have situations where even for a girl, she may just want to hook up and, you know, sleep around, see what she likes, or for a guy as well. But at the end of the day, you're going to meet somebody you're going to have a deeper connection and, and it's going to create a friendship and of course if if you have a, a good uh sexual chemistry as well then that's uh that's a good thing right so but you you take the relationship where you want to take it but the initial part where you're meeting somebody how you're introducing yourself and you know, all that needs to be looked at needs to be established for people strong insightful balanced men leading other men creating empowered men in this world healthy men healthy men i find they're doing the work of mitigating toxic masculinity but rather it's us in this like watered down bbc feminism and i am a feminist but i will say in this narrative i find we are doing nothing to help men to support men we are doing nothing to create healthy male spaces containers for men to grow that's all I'm saying is like, fine, let's cut the pickup shit out of the way. I don't care. Let's cut it out of the way. Fine. But at the end of the day, these men need somewhere to assimilate, to grow. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever had the pleasure of witnessing as a woman invading the male spaces, as I'm always accused of. Sorry. But I will say I'm so grateful because I've had the pleasure of watching men break down in tears, hugging other men, you know, really just letting go of all these coping mechanisms because it's so fucking uncomfortable being them. I can't even imagine. That's why I feel weird making these videos. Like I, I have a lot of my own privileges as a woman in society. I do. I have a lot of permission to like let go, to emote. I do. I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so sad to think that men don't have those spaces. They don't have that permission. And I'm so grateful for these male spaces that exist for men to do exactly that. And I'm sorry, world, that it happens to present itself as pickup artist communities. I'm sorry that that's what it's had to come to 
But this is all I'm saying, BBC and whoever, can we open up a more nuanced, balanced platform where men can assimilate as men and explore the the experience of being men together, something that I can't speak to. I'm not a man. This is an everyday experience for women. Uh, and it's not a Glasgow issue, it's not a Scotland issue, it's not a UK issue, it's a global issue where we have issues of masculinity, issues of femininity. We have a culture in which this is normalised. Rape culture is normal. Seeing words and, and phrases like last minute resistance, what the hell is that? That's normal. That's normal in this society for last minute resistance to be a conversation that men have online with each other to discuss how to overcome a woman's consent. Not only women that receive hateful comments online, men get it just as much, if not more. We get hateful stuff sent to us all the time, but so what? We're adults, it's no big deal. I can always close the browser. However, being yelled at through a megaphone by a lunatic on the street is a lot harder to ignore. Feminism is quite angry and has a lot of complaints and separatism. Fuck what the shamers say and fuck what the feminists say. Where is the other side of the story? Which in my mind, I'll tell you what it is. In my mind, the other side of the story is rather than pointing our fingers at these communities and just saying, no, 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 no. You know what would be great? You know what would be so great world? Like I'm freaking losing it. <clears throat> It'd be great if we took the time to ask ourselves, you know, to point the finger back at ourselves, men, women, whoever, to point the finger back at ourselves and ask, why do these communities exist? Why do these communities need to exist? And maybe they don't need to exist, but let's unpack it. Why do these communities need to exist? Is it that young men are just disgusting, horny, manipulative dudes who just want to use women and fuck them is that what it is because i understand when we create these media pieces like the bbc has done and other people who have attempted to do that's what they are saying it's sort of like it becomes this kind of like virtue signaling like no 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 those men are evil those men are evil but in my mind it's like hello why does this exist do you really think that these men are these disgusting slime ball manipulative fuckers what i want to what i want to explore and what i why i find it so important to talk about these things from a more balanced point of view is let's look at men you know and the manosphere is gonna shit on me from tell me i'm like you know uh marla singer from fight club invading male spaces fine yes sure okay fine but the way i've always felt in getting close to these communities in paying my 300 dollars to attend an event where i was the only woman is I must conduct myself with the type of responsibility that ensures I'm recognizing this is a male space. And the male space is an important container for men. If you asked a hundred women if they would like to get approached by the right guy and at what time they would like to get approached by the, what, by the guy they like, um, they would tell you anytime. They would tell you, yeah, I'll be more than glad if I got approached at a coffee place or I would be more than glad if I got approached at the mall, right? Like a hundred women, if you asked a hundred women, a high percentage would be like, yeah, like, or maybe even a hundred of them. If you asked them the question, if you were to get approached at any time of the day by the guy that you picture ideal in your mind, wouldn't that be cool and I'm, i mean why would you say no to that right like why would you say no to that just like he approaches you he chats you up for five minutes you you get to know him a bit he seems pretty cool you know you've got stuff to do right and even not even five minutes even if you're like short on time two minutes he chats you up for you've got stuff to do but it's he seems cool why not get a coffee with him and get to know him further right Oh, he seems like your type, da 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 You would probably accept that, right? The reason I started Day Game was so that we could get away from all the manipulative, dodgy stuff that goes on normally with guys who are trying to meet women, right? So, at least back in the, back in the day, I don't, I don't even know what's going on out there now, but I'm assuming this is still going on. Men don't have the courage, the chutzpah, the balls to walk up to women they're attracted to in real life and say, hey, you're gorgeous. Do you have a boyfriend? 
I'd really like to take you out for a coffee sometime if you're single. They they don't. I, I know men should be able to do that, and it's not really a big deal, but they can't. And they don't because it's a big deal. They're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of what are people going to say? What if people find out she rejected me? I'm not good enough. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm probably not rich enough. She probably has a boyfriend. Million and one excuses that men come up with, okay? So... So most guys would go to clubs and maybe through friends, they'd need some women or whatever, but a lot of guys would get drunk so they would have the courage to talk to women. And some of them, unfortunately, would be preying on women who've had a few drinks and they'd go for those. Not, not so cool. There's, there's always gonna be people that are framing certain things in a bad light. Okay, I'm teaching, what I'm teaching I know helps men. I know takes men forward. I know that there's a lot of other companies that what they teach helps men and really helps them with their dating life. And that's, that's the main thing. I know that this community, this industry is helping men. Okay. Um, you take any industry, as I said before, you take uh, marketing, you can frame that as, oh, these sleazy marketers, or you can frame it as, look how they're trying to market a product that's really helping society. Everything can be framed in two different ways. And that's all this is. This is a negative frame of the community it's a negative frame of these uh, of the industry okay and in my opinion it's incorrect it's not close to the objective truths i always saw the dating advice to just be a vessel of communication if anything it's a hook that gets these guys through the door because guys think what's my place in the world i'm a man what's my place in the world i must fuck women I'm a man, I must do this. So it's like basically the, the ploy there is to hit men where they're most insecure about themselves, their place in this world, their purpose in, the, in this world and how they fulfill their identity as men who can conquer women. It's a little bit of a hook. Get them through the door. Get these men clicking these videos, these informative like how to, you know, connect with women types of videos, content on the internet. And then once they're in, once they're in, you end up hearing from these people and again in my case it's real social dynamics who then begin to unpack life okay then begin to unpack this amazing again kind of fringe self-help content the kind of stuff that tony robbins can't even talk about the kind of stuff that i always felt was extremely real like how to align with your goals how to quote unquote burn the boats and really go after what makes life exciting for you to pursue your passions to recognize that being an attractive person who fuck dating being an attractive person who people want to have in your network people whoever you know possible business opportunities cool male friends for men awesome female partners it requires building skills life skills it requires building yourself as a human being so when i got sucked into the world of uh, real social dynamics through the pickup stuff, I was using it to advance my social skills <laughs> because all of my life I was extremely socially anxious, possibly growing up on some sort of spectrum of, of autism. You know, just seriously, I, I couldn't speak words. I couldn't do any of what you see me doing on my YouTube channel. I was stuck. I was miserable. I felt like I couldn't like myself. I felt like as a result, no one could like me. And then I found these guys, these weird fringe dating coaches and found out that these are actually some of the most epic and resonant life coaches I'd ever heard of in my entire life. And for years in my teens, I would secretly watch their videos because of all the shame associated with what it would mean to follow these guys. But I was secretly watching their videos so that I could find that connection with the messages they were propelling. During my time in the community, I witnessed so many young men completely turn their life around and become a much better person simply because they improved their dating life from following RSD. It may sound pathetic and dumb to those of you who have never experienced doing this, but it was an area in life I wanted to improve in bars and nightclubs all around the world with the goal of getting some numbers and landing dates with the prettiest of women, but ultimately what we were all after was finding the best version of ourselves already within us. It saddens me that there will be a generation of people who will no longer have access to content that changed my life and hundreds of thousands of men's lives across the globe. 
It may just save a few men's lives who are living a life of quiet desperation. What we want to do as men is like help each other and like help each other, like open our eyes to like, you know, so not just for men, but for women as well, so that we can both have like fluid dating, um, uh, like a dating life that's fluid for both men and women so that they can meet each other and perhaps, you know, no judgment set, um, you know, if they want to just hook up, go ahead. If they want to have relationships, go ahead, whatever, right? Like that's like the whole point. The purpose of all of it is just to help, you know, I was in that position where I had no idea how to like go, go up to a girl and like how to even get a girlfriend, right? Cause I was young. So I needed guidelines and, you know, I did find, you know, a missed all the all the things going on like i did find decent advice and it did help me you know understand certain things uh when, when it comes to dating and stuff so it's not a bad thing you know they 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 had decent intentions and they they, they did pave the way for what uh you know for a lot of good things and good ideas that we have today and a lot of knowledge about dating and stuff so you know it, it's kind of sad to see like people who criticize actually the the most important aspect of what i was teaching was the social freedom element it wasn't about like say this or do this to get her number or do this on the date like all that was part of our dating courses but the thing that was really changing people's lives and empowering them was the social freedom aspect of it. The fact that you would be free in any moment to express your truth to whoever's around. So if you're walking down the street, a woman walks by, she looks at you, you look at her, she smiles, you smile, and you think, you know what? I think she likes me. I really want to meet her. And you have the courage to, to walk up to her and say, hey, how's it going? Yeah, beautiful smile. I just want to say hi to you. What's, what's your name? You should be able to do that as a man. You should be able to do that as a woman too. So we empower men to be able to do that but it takes work so we actually go and we look at what are their beliefs what what are the things going on in their head that the mind programs the patterns the societal beliefs the uh, the self uh, beliefs that are stopping them from being able to just express themselves authentically mostly they're bullshit right and we expose them as bullshit and i have a series of exercises i take people through where they challenge that little voice that little that ego Right, that says, oh, you're not good enough. She probably has a boyfriend. She's gonna reject you. What will people think? We actually train you to separate who you are from that voice, to see it as a critic, and actually to shut that voice down so you can follow your heart, your, your true desire, what you have going on here on the deepest level, that intention of like, oh my God, I wanna go meet this person. I wanna go say hi to this woman. I wanna give this woman a compliment. We show you that it's okay to follow that voice. Nothing bad's gonna happen. And most women actually, if you do it the right way, they really appreciate uh, the attention. They appreciate uh, a genuine compliment from a guy. Be you, express yourself fearlessly, be authentic, and everything will be fine. It's not about manipulating anyone into doing anything. So basically, at the end of our courses, guys are, are fearless in their ability to uh, approach anyone and express themselves authentically. So it doesn't really matter whether you want to get a girlfriend, you want to eventually meet a woman and get married and have kids, you want to date multiple girls, or you just want to be that guy who's charismatic who can talk to everybody at parties and make lots of friends, make business contacts, be better at business networking. It doesn't make any difference. It's just if you feel comfortable being who you are and expressing yourself authentically and you're not afraid of rejection, the world is your playground. You could talk to anyone anytime. You're always the life of the party because you're living fearlessly. The way feminized society is programmed things, it's like guys are even scared to talk to a woman like they're committing a crime. It's more accepted to dress up and drag and walk around with an asexual type of vibe or thinking than it is for a man to talk to a woman. It's not even a thing to be ashamed of. It's the most natural thing. Other things aren't to be ashamed of if that's what people want to do, but they are weirder. They're not the natural way of how things are. It's not how human beings survive and replicate and procreate and have babies and families and keep the human race going there's nothing to be ashamed of it's just dating a lot of our audience comes from places like the uk the us canada australia where yeah again the rise of, of feminism it's it's gone beyond it's it's almost anti-masculine isn't yeah. it um in its nature and 
the fact is, if you want a change of scene and you don't really want to have to deal with that, just just go go to somewhere like Russia, go go to Eastern Europe where the gender roles, it's not sexist, men and women are different, but we're equal. Yeah. But men are allowed to be men and women are allowed to be women. And that's not sexist me saying that. And it's not better or worse. It's no, it's not. Different. It's just as it is. Yeah. It's, just a, not safe. it's just a very unsafe environment for all this. And it's, it, it is, a, a you know, not crisis against masculinity, but it seems to be the, 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 the more we get into the, the late 2010s, the harder it is to be a man who actually just is able to go and say hello in an authentic way and people will string you up for that. We genuinely believe in being a sociable guy and we genuinely believe in being authentic with your communication and that stems from talking to women sober whenever you see them. You know, that spur of the moment thing. So that's not going to change. We're talking about getting a girlfriend here, dating, right? It just seems to be like a big part of people's life. And I'd like to point out that it's 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 important right because you have society right now you have people getting married you have like every movie that you see everyone's together so relationships are like a big part right and we all want to navigate it you know you see around society a lot of people go crazy because like a girl that not like them and they're like the shootings and all kinds of stuff man so you know male female dynamics are something that need to be talked about they need to be talked about in a healthy discussion right but instead what we have nowadays is the weirdest thing in the world it, when i compare my experiences online which are fine i've had decent dating experiences but when i compare with actual or when you actually approach somebody in real life and meet them in person like i just feel like the people i meet in in, in real life are just so much better for me we have better connections and, and 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 just the quality just overall of the person is better and like i got to go up to the person i got to meet the person introduce myself it's just it's a different dynamic and you know they really you view you can really connect really well offline so um you know the the dating pool online is like that, that whole situation is strange man but uh we we i'm not gonna go into that right now um you guys know what's up with that you know like about the whole discussion of like a small percentage of very attractive guys like you know just having the biggest pool selection online i don't know what and and, and that makes sense too because online is accessible to like any guy right anyone who any any anybody without any much much of investment could just hop online and that's what guys do and that's why they don't have success because they don't really work on their profiles that much and when you do work on your profile and all that stuff uh you know it might still not be the best right so i mean why limit yourself to such you know to to something that's under construction or that's not really there yet where it needs to be right like the whole online thing right why limit yourself to that when you can just be and do what human beings have been doing for a lot of years since the beginning of time which is actually go up to somebody and meet them in person social conditioning um generally um you've got to kind of um deliberately try and reject uh most mainstream thinking uh not all of it some of it obviously is uh, is correct and useful but um generally i don't care uh, i really be and give a fuck about the mainstream um, because if you think about it, most people including myself you know and you everyone pretty much we're all kind of idiots when it comes to most things you know like most topics uh, we might have like some knowledge in a in a specific area but uh, when it comes to most things in the world we are uh, quite oblivious and uh, ignorant about most things right and so uh, I would say that that's the case with most uh, average people. Most people don't know about pickup, and those that have kind of heard about pickup uh, might have a completely ignorant and skewed uh, perception of it, right? So, uh, like when I'm gaming and I see someone looking at me, uh, approaching, right? Um, I don't really give a fuck what they think about what I'm doing, right? Most of the time, uh, they, they don't really know what's going on, and even if they thought I'm doing pickup, Ultimately, I know that um, they probably don't know much about it, right? Uh, and so I don't really care about their opinion, right? Because it's coming from a place of ignorance. In the same way that, say, um, if I'm speaking to an engineer, you know, like, and then I start giving him my opinions on engineering when I know nothing about it, I should he give a flying fuck what I think, right? So um, 
Uh, that's how I feel about most people. Um, I, I don't really need their approval. Uh, I don't expect it. And I think it's really important to be comfortable with that and not even see it. The male space is a very important container for men. And why I invite anyone, everyone, the BBC, whoever, to ask this question, point our fingers, me, point our fingers back at ourselves is because I think we need to take more responsibility for our society and the consequence of our different narratives and scripts in it that put many individuals, men, women, and everyone in between, it puts us in these boxes where we don't really know how we align with the world, what we want to do with our beautiful and short lives in this world, and as a result, many of us find these different communities that we can find some alignment with so that we can then develop ourselves as individuals and make the most of our lives and bring value into our lives and then cycle that value back into the world around us. And I'm talking in general. All of us need at some point to gravitate towards community. We are social creatures. We our social creatures, we need communities to flourish. We need communities for that sense of identity, tribes, whatever it is, we need community. And what I see is greatly deficient. The society of dating right now is a mess. It's a huge mess. Like the online thing is just a mess. Guys are confused. I mean, a lot of guys are frustrated. They're not able to get dates. They're not able to get girlfriends. They're not able to get laid at all. And they're struggling. They're online BSing. That's like the number one thing now. And then they're just, you know, it's just sad to see um, how bad how bad it is and it doesn't only affect men it affects women as well but if you take out like the hardcore people who are like really trying to dig in and trying to figure things out and you kind of just leave like you know the 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 socially conditioned kind of like floating ideas of like oh you need money to get girls or you need you know super good looks to get girls or you need this like you know what i mean which which you know which is what pushes guys away and kind of makes them fall into a shell and actually not get success and not get dates but there do there does need to be the proper advice like of course you should take care of yourself of course you should look as, uh, as good as you can but you should also be confident and know how to navigate and know how to approach women at bars and clubs know how to approach women during the day correctly a guy seeing a girl and approaching her just walking up to her and saying hi is an extremely natural thing to do nowadays because of the modernization of our society with the rise of social media and there being naturally less socializing than there used to be before i believe that is a cultural trend that is happening in this day and age the media nowadays is trying to have more and more of an influence over our thoughts as shown in the type of news that they're presenting as well as the way that they're presenting these news where it's no longer just a matter of fact or an objective fact but now it's heavily diluted with personal opinion and political views something as pure and as beneficial for a society as normal regular guys who have social anxiety learning how to be more confident learning how to better communicate themselves if something like that can be misrepresented in a way where they put eerie weird music over it with lots of flashy weird editings to paint the whole thing in a negative super dark and manipulative sort of way then we really have to be careful where we consume our information and watch our news from when you, when you don't fulfill that need you start fulfilling it in other ways if you can't get it you know so you end up you know watching pornography a lot of pornography um, and you can start delving into different sort of addictive fetishes and just through the the brain chemistry of uh, desensitization you you keep changing and changing and before you know it you you know you've got some deep deep problems there so there is a real 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 problem at the moment with these guys you've got the guys that don't go out and they're just masturbating at home every day watching pornography um, not getting out there and they're living their lives in anguish and turmoil and you've got the other end of the spectrum you've got the guys that are you know quote unquote doing the best they can they're, they're working their jobs and they're still not meeting uh women and they're still not meeting these women because 
it's very um, hard to meet people with you going out three hours a week on a weekend and that's all you've got so it's like what does the modern man do so you look at what the modern man does okay so he works his nine to five job um, and what he goes out on a Saturday night like everyone else uh, gets drunk with alcohol so he numbs himself and then maybe hooks up with a girl and you know something happens or it doesn't uh, or what you scroll through tinder um, those are really the two options I mean I, I have friends who, who live that lifestyle and they they're still you know really really unhappy so really it's creating a deep deep problem with 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 uh, men in modern day society which wasn't the case if you look back a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago you know a guy sees a girl he goes for what he wants he's bold and there was no tinder there was no modern day weakness so what what does this so this leaves you with an issue a problem now so what does the modern day man do if he's in one of these categories he has to learn is the only option he's either got to learn to be better which i think every single man on this planet can do everyone can be a little bit better if you take away day approach you ha you, you kind of have night approach which is something that's more socially um supposed to be you know more socially acceptable and what are you getting at night right what are, you, what are you getting during uh during night approach right what you're getting is <laughs> man it's an interesting thing because of course um it works it works it definitely does you could actually meet people um at night but uh i'm not a big fan of it just because i don't want to be out late at night and i don't i just i don't want to be out drinking um and if you want to meet somebody here's the thing it's like really do you have to go out and drink every weekend do you have to go out and like sacrifice sleep and you know go out there when 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 the alternative is so nice it's like you have a morning coffee you wake up it's sunlit it's beautiful you just you stroll down to some street and you meet a woman out you know during the day in a very healthy manner where you have your stuff together you're not out all night you know losing sleep and and you don't have to necessarily party i mean there's nothing wrong with it at all i think night approach is awesome i just don't think it has to be the only option right and there's many options and that's one of them and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it you know you can meet people doing that as well i don't want to talk bad about it because there's nothing bad to say about it i just want to say that there's alternatives um for people and that you don't only have to do that right like i've had a decent dating life this year and i haven't done much nighttime approaching right because i like to be up during the day i like to work on my business i like to you know work on my job take care of myself my health have a nice diet go to the gym you know spend time to, with friends and occasionally i'll go out you know at night spend some time with friends yeah i can do approaches here and there as well but i'm not forced to go every weekend just to meet people because i know that i can meet people in many different places it's unfortunate that it's easier in general with this community with this um industry it's easier for the for society to want to paint us in a bad light okay because no one wants guys to get better with women unfortunately okay people might say they do girls might say they do society some people might say they do no one wants you to get better with women no one wants you to become more confident no one wants you to become a better version of yourself stay the same person by certain um get certain things buy alcohol buy drugs to numb yourself buy all these things okay don't improve yourself just use all these get netflix get this get that watch movies okay always remain the same okay and that's the way our society is is being shaped that's that's what it is okay unfortunately no one <laughs> is not really going to do Hopefully it happens, but a documentary saying, no, you should, um, you should be better. You should be a better version of yourself. That's very niche. Okay. It's very niche. It's not in the mainstream. If you want to find self-help, self-development advice, that's really practical, really effective. It's more, it's niche. The more mainstream you go, the more watered down the content becomes.
because the mainstream can't handle certain content. Okay? So, overall, I mean, look, I, told, I said to you, very weak piece of journalism. Um, but that doesn't matter. The, this is always going to be people that see certain things in a certain light. And that's to do with their beliefs, their mindsets. Don't let something like this, um, a, a piece like this, a documentary like this, um, give you any negative emotions about, is what I'm doing correct? Is what I'm doing right? No. Okay. He framed it in a, they, well, BBC framed it in a terrible way. Okay. They took on a certain frame. That shouldn't be the frame that you believe in. That shouldn't be the frame that you identify with. You should identify with the frame of, I'm here to improve myself. I'm here to improve my life with women. And if you believe in that frame, keep going. Okay, keep taking action, keep improving yourself. Don't let something like this stop you or hinder you in any way. This is nonsense again, and we're going to have to put up with a lot more of this in the UK, but it's going to get better. It's going to get better. We're not going anywhere. So anyone that's watched that documentary and is scared now to go and talk to a girl that you find attractive in the daytime, don't be. Women are always going to respond to strong men. Women are always going to appreciate you coming up and respectfully introducing yourself to them because we're not moving to an online dating culture. It's not the way that we're going to let the world go and let the culture in the UK go. There are better ways to do that and we're not going to have, we're not going to let it go that way. It's, it's incredibly damaging to the social fabric of, of, of the UK. If you think about it in terms of biology, women are looking for the 1% you know, the exceptional guy. The, the quantity means nothing to them. Uh, what matters is quality. Is, you know, uh, how many pregnancies can they have? So really, for them, quantity is nothing. What matters is quality. So, in a way, everything, um, what we're trying to do in pickup is to be the guy that stands out, the most attractive guy, you know? The guy who is, uh, who isn't like fucking wallpaper that stands out. So you've got to be kind of like, not only should you like not be afraid of standing out, kind of have to deliberately stand out because that's how you succeed. And not just in pick up, but like in <laughs> most other things in business as well, you know? Uh, you're not going to uh, have a multi million dollar business if you're like, like everyone else, are you? So um, you, you got to realize that um, you know, most mainstream thinking isn't helpful. You know, it's true, it's there to keep you, you know, average. They like half. Uh, didn't really approve of uh, what I was doing, you know. They, was, uh, they would say, hey, why can't you just get a fucking normal office job, da, 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 da. But if I gave a fuck, I mean, what they thought I would have given up, but I didn't, you know. And now most of them have come round and, you know, they think what I do is cool and they like it, you know. You, you basically got to own it. You can't be fucking embarrassed to say, fuck you, and I'm going to do this because I want to, ultimately. If you take the daytime approaching and you... You, what, what does it leave you with right and I, and I looked into this stuff in in google right and what i saw was it leaves you with online it leaves you with a social circle like it tells you oh meet a friend through a friend right and it's like oh really is it going to be an infinite dating pool and you know the amount of effort that takes to like put up all that right and it's like why should you do that when you could just be confident uh, and approach and actually focus on other things rather than you know than, than cultivating around a social circle with the purpose of just meeting somebody well you could just walk up to somebody and say hi and you don't have to go through all that right or join a club just so you can meet somebody and then you know after a year of being with the person in the club you figure it's like why not just go up and say hi and then actually get to know the person rather than go through all that so they send you through all these paths that essentially what they do is they leave you needy for one specific person and you and there's chances of luck based and it's just like a long process that is just not really fun it's just not fun because there's like you you can't really make sense of it right and yeah of course there's success stories where people do end up meeting their significant other through that through that but it could have been a, you could have ended up with that significant other in in a more in, in a more direct way rather than all that beating around the bush you know, and one may say oh but what about the fantasy the story the the disney story you know where it all happened look the bottom line is 
the bottom line is that most guys aren't getting success in in that way right it's just the, the exceptional stories where it was cute that you guys randomly met because the stars aligned and you you ran into each other you know a couple of times here and there and it's like yeah okay that happens to some people that's fine but for the majority of guys that's not the case man social circles aren't being you know out there like that guys can't you know don't join no clubs because they don't know what club to join in so bbc so i would officially request you to do a part two where you talk about the benefits and uh, good things that come from people uh, working on themselves and, and achieving social freedom and uh going out there and saying hi to people they find attractive as well uh, i am available for an interview by the way so uh i don't think you guys reached out to me i was a little bit upset i guess that's a good thing because i'm not really doing it anymore uh, but i think even better would be to educate people about how this can be beneficial i think if we actually taught men based basic social skills women too actually if we taught people basic social skills that it was okay to feel attracted to someone that it was okay to want to go and express that that it was okay to walk up to people and introduce yourself and say hi and say hey do you have a boyfriend i'd love to take you on a date sometime if men got that kind of basic education in when they were 10 or 12 or 14 years old we would not be having the problems that we're having today in society on many 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 levels so again teachers hey guys uh start teaching this stuff to the kids It'll make the world a better place.